Who is Stacy A. Cross? Well, here I am. I am Stacy A. Cross. There is no E in my name. I decided to make a video just kind of chronicling. Chronicling. I hope that's right. Kind of giving you an inside view of who I am, how I came to be Stacy A. Cross. There's no E in my name. And what I plan to do and my background and the whole bit. Okay, so this is my story. Everyone has a story and I encourage you to share yours. Yours is just as important as mine. Yours is just as important as Bill Gates. Your story is just as important as the president's. Your story is as important as you think it is. So I want you to share your story because I believe in you and I believe in self-improvement. Self-improvement became an integral part of my life and my growth and my, it led me to entrepreneurship. It led me to wanting to be able to be amongst an impactful uh, relationship of social contingent impact. I just wanted to throw some big words in there. All that meant to me was I just want to be, I just want to leave a legacy that people could actually um, pull up and they could, they could change their lives. I'm focused on that because I've changed my life. Now, as a kid growing up, of course, I had entrepreneurship tendencies, but I never followed through on uh, followed through on a lot of the things that I wanted to do. Like, I started a hip hop label in my bedroom. It was called Bedroom Productions. I was like 13 years old. Did a few uh, rap songs on my tape recorder and called it a day. I was involved in hip hop all the way through 2009, and you can probably find some albums that I created on the internet. Um. I'm from Jamaica, and as you know, Jamaicans were hard workers, we're persevere, we persevere, uh, we're dedicated, we're family people. Um, if you wanted to make a joke about Jamaicans, you would say that they work six jobs. Uh, come from a family of nurses. In fact, I was in nursing school, went to clinicals, and didn't pass. And I didn't pass because, you know, as much as I volunteered as a kid in the hospital, I just didn't see it as my path and my journey. So, you know, I don't know if it was some spiritual thing that made me not understand the test portion of it because I understood the concepts of it. I was very good, very smart and intellectual with the information. But when that test came around, man, I stared, I stared at that thing and I was like, psh, psh. Um, so I spoke to a counselor uh, for the School of Nursing and she said, well, what's wrong with you? I mean, you know this stuff. And I was like, man, you're right, I do know this stuff. Why am I not uh, passing the test? It was like a little bit of a struggle for me. So I decided it wasn't me, but I learned the valuable lesson during nursing school. And it was all the way up in clinicals. And there was one part of my clinicals where you have to actually work out of a hospital as if you're already a nurse, right? And uh, so you get a patient a day and you're writing a clear care plan in the chart and you're, you're spending that time. If you're putting in catheters, you've got to take care of this person. And, um, you know, I had, to, I had a patient there all day, you know, the whole eight hours of what, that class. I had this one patient to care of her, washed her up, you know, she couldn't get out of bed. I had to do some other things, um, you know, to make sure that she got her medication, fed her and, and cleaned her up a bit. And then I walked out to the area where, uh, you know, the, the nurse's station. I walked out there and I'm just finishing up some things in the chart. And the doctor comes through and he just scribbled something in the chart that I'm working on and walked away. And I was like, well, how much is he getting paid? I want to be him. I just want to come scribble some things and get out of here, you know? Um, and then on top of that, there was a time where, you know, I needed to take out a bunch of private loans to pay for this thing that I didn't finish. Damn. And, you know, I got the private loan and I took it out. I had to get cash and I brought it to the, to the billing office and the, you know, and it was almost like seven grand for one class, which is crazy. And I know there's, you know, some colleges cost way more than that. This is one class, and I was just like, so I pulled the cash out. We're counting it on the desk, and I'm like, man, we're counting. And I was like, damn. <laughs> and I'm, I was just, man, shit, <laughs> you know? And uh, even the, the registrar lady, the billing lady, she was like, wow, this is a lot of money. I was like, yeah. And so, it was a dream for my parents, really, and it was an, a dream of like a rite of passage for my family, being coming from healthcare, 
my grandmother, my aunts, you know, we were just big in healthcare. A lot of Caribbean folks are, you know, we, we take good care of people. And that's just our nature. So if I salute all the nurses, anyone in the healthcare, CNAs and above, all the way up to, um, you know, PAs and physicians and doctors and what you do at the time that you dedicated. You know, it was great experience for me. I learned a lot, but it just wasn't for me. Um, so then here comes a bunch of failed things that I've done. A bunch of failed things. And the biggest thing that I remember about myself was just that I procrastinated. So a lot of the things that I told myself, I didn't even believe. Like I told myself I would do. So obviously people didn't believe me. It, was, it took a long time to, to rearrange the mindset of other people about me. You know, like my integrity, like build, rebuilding that was, was definitely tough, you know. Um, so I have two brothers and two older brothers and, you know, they taught me a lot as well. Um, and, you know, we had the one, one bedroom apartment growing up and we'd have to sort of hide from the landlord because, you know, you can't have three kids in a one bedroom apartment. So it was a point where me and my brothers were like hiding in the bushes to go home, you know, after school, like, oh my God, he's outside, you know, let's, let's go jump behind the bushes and then go home. It was, it was kind of like the survival thing. And my mom worked real hard, really hard to support me and my brothers and, um, you know, and, and make sure that we're well taken care of, doctors, visits, and, and all of that, you know, coming to America. And, uh, and we came to the America, we came to America, the America, we came to America for the American dream. And I know at least my grandparents had that. Rest in peace, my grandfather. But I, they're, they're very powerful, strong, famil family people. And um, they really worked very hard to bring the entire family up from Jamaica. So I came up at the age of like seven, I believe six. And I remember going to kindergarten and and my accent was thick. They're like, what is this girl saying? I'm like, what? We, I'm, sp I'm speaking English. What the hell are you talking about? You know? Um, but I just remember it was I just loved entrepreneurship. I loved business. I always was a creative type and I wanted to do more with my life. I would look out the window and just ask, you know, who am I? You know, what am I on earth for? And this is very early on, you know, I would be very, a lot, and just so emotional about life and the experiences and spring reminded me of this renewal from way back then. Um, but I procrastinated a lot. I didn't follow through on everything. You know, I started a company called Grinding Season Fashion where um, uh, me and a couple of my friends would go to New York and grab some bootleg shirts and Air Force Ones and North Faces and come back and have a delivery service on, um, on wheels. Like, we'll call, hey, you need a white tee? This is when, when white tee was the thing. Black and white tees, Air Force Ones, and uh, we'd just make sure we had it. But, uh, you know, that fell through when it was the next time to go pick up from Sixth Ave in New York. So, you know, you can see there, like, businesses start up, the, the, the intent was there, but it just never followed through. Um, and the biggest portion of my life was the gambling addiction. Nine years. And the first time of, I ever walked in the casino, I think I was 14, of course I couldn't go gamble at that time, but I was mesmerized. It was a family trip down to Atlantic City, and, uh, you know, my, the, 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 my parents, aunts, uncles, the older folks would go inside the casino and the kids would go on the boardwalk. But for some reason I was, I didn't want to go with the kids. So I just watched over, there was a little platform. So I just watched over and kind of stared at the lights and kind of was mesmerized and just looked to see if my mom was happy. If she was happy, then I know she was winning. If she had that sad sourpuss face, uh, she was losing. And the rides would be... Uh, remarkable because we would all be laughing and driving towards this place and I always realized that when we were coming back though we were all quiet in the car it was like wow some people lost some money so I kind of gauged some things with that but I did see how gambling you know we were able to quick fast get some money um, and pay some things you know so I knew that it was a source if you were lucky uh, to, to, to to win big or something but this is the, the 90s now, and so, but, you know, at, there was one time I did go down there, I was underage, I ended up going in there, and they didn't stop me, so I went in, and I, I was playing, and I think, you know, it was, it was just fun, it was like a video game to me, you know, um, nine years later, though, you know, I started gambling, of course, 21, all the way, 9, 21, 22, 23, 31, 
yeah, probably a little more than nine years, 20, yeah, maybe 23 I started. Uh, but it got real bad for me three years towards the end of it where I was totally controlled by it. And I would have instances where I would feel like that's all I would do. Like 24 hours of the day, I'm sitting in front of a slot machine. I would drive to three or four casinos in the day. Like this one's not good. I'm gonna go to the other one. Um, and I, would, I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind. I was depressed. I was kind of stressed. My money management was gone. Self-confidence was low. Um, my behavior was that of someone up to something, <laughs> you know, like you're up to something. Where are you going after you get this hundred dollars to borrow money all the time? My cousins, hey, you got a hundred dollars and this and that. And I would take that and I would go to the casino. And um, it wasn't until I would, you know, came here to Philadelphia and worked at an airline. It wasn't until work there and somebody was like, I recognize you. You always go to this casino. And I was like, oh shit, I've been found. Someone else knows, oh my God. And there would be plenty of nights where, you know, I would get out of there and I would cry. I would legit cry and scream in my car for dear life. Like, I really wanted to stop. Like, it, it got to a point where I even recognized that I had a problem. You know, before it was the denial, like, nah, you know, I could stop. I'm only just having fun. And they got to a point that I even knew it. I would... Man, and it would affect my finances so bad that even my partner, you know, would get these eviction notices on the door and and I was supposed to do this with this money and I ended up taking it just on a wish, on, on a whim to, man, it was bad. And um, so I knew I had to change. I knew there, that there was a time that was going to happen where I needed to change my life. So... It was February 14, 2016, when I went to a seminar. All I, all I wanted to do was do different things. Like, instead of going to a casino, I'm going to go to a seminar and, and just try to change. And I walked in, sat down, met a couple people, sat in the front. And then I, the guy on the stage, you know, I'm just listening to him. And then in my head, I was like, why is that not me? Like, what? Why, why can't that be me? I said to myself. And there was something that he said, sort of like, you know, you know, you guys got to believe in yourself or whatever. The place went wild. Like, this is the best motivation ever. And I was like, believe in yourself, man. Come on. Like, really? Shit. Like, give me some profile. I'm trying to change here. Like, tell me something I don't know. And that's just how naive I was. And I ended up walking out of that seminar because something hit me. Something, this aha moment, this awakening, sort of like, I get it now. I know the difference between success and failure. I know what needs to be done. So I remember someone asking me, in fact, he's a good friend of mine now. He said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm the host of the, Comfort, the Get Uncomfortable. I had the podcast at the time. I was like, Get Uncomfortable podcast. And... Um, you know, I'm the founder of the Comfort Killers, and I just said it, and I was like, the hell was that? And he was like, wow, that's, yeah, that's awesome, the Comfort Killers? And I just kept it, I just kept it. So I, I came home and I was like, ah, I got it, I feel it, I feel so great, holy smoke. And all the time, I've been in my stories, I say, you know, how I walked out the seminar, but that seminar really triggered me. It planted real seeds in me. It was a free seminar, but I just knew that I didn't want to be them all the time, just going to, to get some boost of motivation and then it depletes, you know, the EDM music, so you're pumping your hand and then you go home and you haven't implemented anything and then you're back at a free seminar. A person in a seminar said to me, oh, you're going to such and such, it's going to be over here. And I was like, what the hell is this, a seminar tour? Like, what is going on? And, um... So I ended up leaving and, and starting the company, The Comfort Killers. And through massive action, I just completely, I just completely changed my life. And the cornerstone of that is personal development, self-improvement. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about, you know, I knew what I knew about business. I was running 
before I shut that down, I was running a clothing brand called Preferred Classics. And, you know, there were some parts of that business that did not make it a business. It was just uh, a lifestyle brand or something. But, um, so I knew a little bit, but I didn't know how to do things, what to do, what to say, how to be. I didn't know what to read, you know? I've tried Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich in like 2008. I, I threw that book, threw it down. I was like, okay, I think I, think, I think I still have that wallet and what I wrote in my wallet from reading that book, but I was like, I threw it away. I was like, this thing doesn't work. What the hell is that? Because, you know, I was looking for these shortcuts and the same thing with the casino, looking for these shortcuts looking for the easy way out. I didn't really want to put any effort in on my own. I didn't want to follow through because I was tied to all those failures, those baby failures on my past life. So I made policies for myself and, and I got up early and I, and I built the life, I meditated, I started getting these spiritual awakenings, these blessings all around me, these miracles. I started feeling different, feeling great. My, my energy was explosive. People could feel it, it was positive. And then I tried one day a whole technique that made me not even think one negative thought or, or action or, or, or comment. I just was like, wow, this is a total different feeling. And now, through the company, the Comfort Killers, through myself, through my brand, through my media, through my podcast, through my books, through everything, I want to give that feeling out. I know that. I want to give that feeling out because if anyone wants to overcome anything, it can be done. Why not you on stage? Why not you sharing your gifts? Why not you up there? Why not your book on the shelf? Okay, or in someone's hand. Why not you on a podcast? Why not you selling millions of products? Why not you serving millions of people? I'm telling you right now, it's up to you to personally develop yourself. And that's why I'm here. I'm going to see you on the Power Talk. That's my story. I'm Stacey A. Cross. There is no E in my name. I'll check you out next time. Thank you for listening. I am.